Hello, this is Chris Neal from South Plains College. Welcome to my Pro Tools How-To Video Series. The following video is in Automation Primer. So we're going to get into what can be automated, groups and automation, automation playlists, differences between audio automation and MIDI automation, and some other stuff. So here's some shortcuts. You'll see my uh, shortcuts at the bottom of the screen. Here's the key, as usual. Okay, well here we are in this session. This is the first of several uh, automation videos and this one is just kind of a primer. So first we'll talk about what can be automated in Pro Tools. The quick answer to that is almost anything. The things that you can't automate are generally things that I wouldn't want to automate in a mix anyways. You can't change IO assignments, um, you can't add or remove a send via automation. Um, so the send has to be there and then you can automate it in or out of the mix or mute it or whatever. But generally I wouldn't want to do that in a mix anyway. So no, uh, no issue there. Now, one other thing that you cannot automate is the changing of presets. You can make those changes. Uh, you just can't do it with a simple preset change. Uh, like you're automating the preset. You have to actually write the automation for all of the parameters of the plugin and change those, uh, parameters via automation. So now we know how much power we have, let's uh, learn how to use it. So first let's take a look at what we can automate about each track. All right, so let's take a look at the different track types and uh, see what we can automate about each of those. So first let's look at the uh, most important track, an audio track. This is a mono audio track. If we click on the track view selector, we get this drop down menu and we have blocks and playlists and things that are about what we see, uh, see on that track. And then we have automation starting there at volume, volume trim, which we'll get into in a later video, uh, mute and pan, and those things are always available uh, on an audio track. So let's scroll up here. I've got a MIDI track up here and let's look at that. So we'll click on the track view selector again, and we see things related to the viewing of the track. Uh, we see blocks, clips. These are all MIDI related, velocity, volume, mute and pan. Again, MIDI volume, mute and pan and then continuous controllers such as pitch bend and so forth. So we have all that, all MIDI related, it's a MIDI track. So just above that we have an aux input track that's housing a virtual instrument at this moment, but we have audio related uh, automation on there, volume, mute, pan, left, right. So we also have a stereo audio track, very, very similar as an audio track, but we see a pan left, pan left, and a pan right. And up here we have an instrument track, uh, which is the combination of a MIDI track and an aux input. So up at the top, we see the exact same thing we saw on the MIDI track, all the MIDI related on top. So you see here, that's the exact same menu that we saw on the MIDI track at the top. And on the bottom, we have the exact same things that you see on an aux input track. That's because an instrument track is a MIDI track and an aux input track in one. So an instrument track records and plays back MIDI. That MIDI is generally routed to a virtual instrument instantiated on that track. That virtual instrument outputs audio. The aux input component of that instrument track injects that audio from the virtual instrument plugin back into our mix. So as we'll see coming up here, that track view selector menu can change and things are added to it as our mix grows in complexity, as we add plugins and automate plugins and as we add sends and so forth. So here on this bass track, we see the send to the Q mix that we had set up. So we'll see this uh, menu change as we adapt and change and make our mix more complex. And when we go to that send, we see we have a level control, level trim and mute for that send. Now that was a mono track going to a mono bus, there was no pan control. So here's a stereo track going to stereo bus, cue left, right. So we see a left and a right. So the sends are similar. If it's a stereo bus and a stereo track, you'll see two pan controls. Up here on the hi-hat, it's a mono track going to stereo bus, so just one pan control. So again, similar to the tracks, they change as well. So if we go look at this audio track down here that's blank, we look at that list, we don't see a send on there. That's because we don't have a send on the track. If we go over to the mix window, we'll see no send is on that track. So we'll add one to the reverb so we can see how that will then appear in that list. So I'll click on send slot A and I will go to track because I already have a reverb set up and I can choose F reverb 
stereo room from that list, and that adds the send to the reverb. And uh, now let's go back to the edit window, and let's look at the track view selector, and now we see send slot A in there to F reverb stereo room. So the last thing that we'll find in this list is our plugin automation. So we're not going to get deep into how to do this right now. So I'm going to add an EQ plugin on here and I'm going to set a control to be automated. So I'm going to choose the EQ one band and I will go to the button just below auto underneath there and click on that and find the control that I would like to automate the parameter frequency. And I click the add button and now I hit OK. And uh, before I close that, let me just set this to be a high pass filter and set the frequency. So now if I go back over to the mix window and I go back to that track view selector, we see now down at the bottom effect C EQ three one band and we see frequency in there. So we could click on that and that would show us that automation lane on that track. So real quick, let's look at how grouping of tracks affects automation. Um, so we have the drums grouped here. So if I open up the uh, track view list and the group list, we see the drums are grouped. So I'm going to go modify and we can see right now it is a mix group and uh, we'll change that to mix and edit. Um, and we can see the tracks that are grouped there. So I'm going to hit OK. And uh, so let's see how uh, automation af is affected by the grouping of tracks. So we'll select all these tracks and we'll set them into touch mode. And let's record some automation and see what happens and see what that looks like. So I'm going to use my uh, control service here and uh, drop in to record and write some automation. And you see how it is being written to all of the tracks. I only grabbed one fader. I did not touch all of those faders. So grabbing that one fader caused all tracks to drop into record mode. And I wrote that uh, volume move on all tracks because of that grouping. So we need to be aware of that functionality so that we can use it when we want it and we can avoid it when we do not want it. And VCAs is one way that we can avoid that. So we'll undo. And let's look at graphically editing in this mode. So if we go and graphically edit on this track, we see that that also affects uh, all the tracks. And that's because this group is a mix and edit group. So we can undo that. And let's see if we modify this group and make it a um, mix only group. Let's see what happens and what changes there. So we can change it to a mix only. And now when we go and edit one of these tracks, let's go up here to the kick and let's edit. And we see that it only affects that track because it's just a mix only. So we'll undo and let's uh, try touch mode here. So I'm going to grab one fader and they all start writing. So that functionality did not change because that's the functionality in the mix window. If you grab a fader in the mix window, all of the faders move. So in Pro Tools, you have two types of automation. You have MIDI automation, which we'll talk about later, and audio automation. So with audio automation, you only get one playlist per parameter. So we only get one volume playlist, one pan playlist, one mute playlist. Doesn't matter if we have multiple audio playlists that we can change underneath that. We just have the one mute, one pan, pan left, pan right. Um, we only get one. So this volume playlist is the only one we got. So we can have multiple audio playlists that uh, reside under that. So I'll go here and let's go to the playlist and let's choose a different playlist. And you'll see how the audio changes underneath, but the volume automation does not change. So we only have one volume automation. We can't have one volume for each playlist that we have. It doesn't work that way. So only one. Okay, let's go up here and look at MIDI. So MIDI is different than uh, the automation that we have for audio tracks. MIDI volume is stored within the MIDI clip itself. So if I go to a different playlist, different MIDI clip there, we can see it has a different MIDI volume. And that's great as each MIDI clip contains its own MIDI data. So each clip can have its own volume automation. That's one of the great things about MIDI. However, it has a drawback in that audio automation has a higher resolution and is therefore more precise than MIDI automation. So let's take a look at the difference between MIDI automation and Pro Tools automation. MIDI is stores data in just 127 steps. 
um, and it stores a point in time. So you can see the MIDI data on the bottom is kind of stair-stepped as we're creating a fade out. Um, so these are stair-stepped and it's a little less jagged um, on the longer it becomes, but uh, it's storing just moments in time uh, and then it holds that until the next change. So that's why it's stair-stepped. Pro Tools automation is vector-based, so we see these smooth transitions of the fader. And so we're going to take a look at it here in a second, and we'll see the MIDI fader is a little bit more jumpy. It's not as smooth, and that creates, in the audio, uh, on, on fade-outs, you'll hear what uh, people refer to as zipper noise. Uh, you kind of hear that jumpiness happening because the fader is just moving from one position to another it's jumping from one position to another rather than smoothly traveling from one to another so let's set up here over here we on the left hand side we've got a purple midi fader and the green aux input fader so first let's just look and watch and see if you can see the purple fader be a little jumpier All right, now let's see if you can hear it. First will be the MIDI, and then will be the audio, and see if you can hear the difference between those two. So whether MIDI volume zipper noise is a problem or not is kind of situational dependent, whether you're doing a fade and what type of a sound you're doing fades on. There's nothing wrong with MIDI volume automation, but that's one of the scenarios under which it could be an issue. So just watch out for it. 